Today, this three-quarter ton Chevy continues its transformation when Ian and Jesse dive back onto their ultimate tow rig, the Suburban Gorilla. Plus, what happens when one race shop produces two tough trucks vying for a championship? It's the battle of the General Lees. Extreme 4x4. This week, we're working on our Suburban Gorilla, the ultimate tow rig. And this is a hardcore custom truck full of lots of really cool one-off pieces. But remember, this thing just started as an 87 three-quarter ton Suburban. Now, we don't think that you're probably going to go out and build your own twin turbo Duramax, but you may be swapping out a gas engine for a diesel engine. So these are just some of the tips and tricks you can use on your own project when we actually show you how to wire and plumb this thing later on. And today's projects really do apply to almost any truck. We're going to mount two different size winches to this frame, plus we're going to deal with some drivetrain protection underneath. We will put in the new fuel tank, and then we'll take this blank canvas of a bumper and turn it into a work of art, making it just as functional as it will be looking good. Since this truck is really going to be used for some serious towing, we had Hill Killer Transmission put together this custom Allison 1000. This is a top of the line transmission for towing, but because it's also going to see just as much time off-road, we need to build some protection in for this deep sump pan, and that's going to mean heavy duty skid plate. And when it comes to skid plates, you really do have some options. If you drive a popular vehicle, you can just go out and buy a heavy duty aftermarket skid plate like this one. But if you have drastically changed the location of your drivetrain like we have, you're probably better off just building your own. Now, building a custom skid plate on this truck is honestly not going to be that hard. There's no body in the way, so we can get in here and take all of our measurements. But when you do something like this to your truck at home, you got to remember, there's only two kinds of off-road trucks. Ones that are broken and ones that are about to break. So you got to be able to service components like the transmission and the transfer case. So your skid plate's going to have to be removable somehow. There's a few things you're going to want to remember if you're building your own skid plate. Make sure that you're not welding the metal directly to the truck. It'll give protection for everything underneath, but if you need to service anything, you're gonna have to cut it out. And another thing is, make sure that you're not mounting it directly to the transmission or transfer case, because one hard hit and you can create a lot more damage. We are going to mount our skid plate directly to our cross member system, with an additional mount at the front. Having a rosebud tip on your oxyacetylene torch will make this job a ton faster. The Allison 1000 has an external oil filter, so to change the fluids with this skid plate should be pretty simple. But if you had a system with an internal filter, you're going to want to make this section of the skid plate removable so you can access in there. All I got to do is cut and finish up this end, and Ian's going to finish up the front. Now the front mount of this skid plate is very important. You can see we mounted it on poly bushings, just like the rest of the cross member for the whole drivetrain. If we'd just taken the skid plate and welded it to the engine cross member, we'd actually be solid mounting the whole thing, which is a big no-no when it comes to the drivetrain. Now you can see this plate still needs to be heated in the middle, cut to the shape of these tubes, and then fully welded, but that's going to be a lot easier when the engine and transmission are out of the truck, so we'll do it later. A turbo motor, whether it's gas or diesel, 
requires a few extra parts, like an intercooler, or for our case, two intercoolers. These high flow aluminum cores were spec by Gale Banks to cool our intake charge after traveling through the turbos. Now you may be asking yourself, why two intercoolers? Well, this engine really is two of everything. It's got two separate intakes, two turbos. It really is two four cylinder engines on one crankshaft. Now if we only had to mount one of these intercoolers, we could drop it right down between the frame rails there, and fit below the hood. But with two, there's a big thing in the way. It's not gonna fit. So we're probably gonna have to cut out some of this frame right in here so it can drop down. <sighs> yeah, that's what we're gonna have to do, I think. Let's get, get to, to work. it. <laughs> When it comes time to mount your wench, there may be some special considerations depending upon what model you got. Now the SUG is not lightweight by any means, so we went out and got the biggest winch we could find. This is the Warren 16.5 Ti. This baby can pull 16 and a half thousand pounds with the 7 16th inch aircraft cable. Now, your installation instructions should tell you what you should be mounting it on. Now this baby suggests that we need 5 16 but the bumper isn't big enough, so we're gonna have to add another plate. Is that gonna be low enough? I think there should be some room because we gotta make the covers, it'll probably sit there. Really won't know until we get that bumper done. Mock it into place. I'm, I'm almost done with it, dude. All right, do that. Just so we can continue fitting on the front, I'll weld our winch mount plate to the bumper, then drill for the mount. I've already cut a hole for the control box and we'll match it on this side for airflow. Ready? Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> Why'd you give me the heavy end? This is the biggest and heaviest winch. It's got to go towards you. Oh, caramba. <laughs> now the reason why we mounted the wench right now is to be able to check for clearances so we can go ahead and finish up this front end. And then once we get all the welding done on the frame rails, we'll simply take this winch and drop it out the bottom. And the bumper, ready for coating. Rhino. Up next, they're a modern day Bo and Luke Duke with rigs worthy enough to be called General Lee. See these two shop brothers battle it out for the championship when Extreme 4x4 continues. This is about the closest we can get to a drive-in movie with the gorilla right now, but don't worry about it, it'll get done by the end of the season. And I for one can't wait. But right now, let's go racing. The Four Wheel Jamboree Tough Truck Series has some wild trucks, but there's only one race team that gets to wear the magical 01 number, that is the General Lee. Yeehaw! After the old General Lee upset the new state of the art General Lee in the final round at Lime, Ohio, there was already talk of a rematch. Four months later and sporting a new coat of paint, the old General Lee was ready for the one-off rematch at the world-famous Indy Fairgrounds. We've been hearing about it every day, not just every other week, it's every day about this oncoming race. At stake in this historic event was more than Daisy Duke's affection. He still hears about Lima, he's not happy about that. Bring it on. I took a closer look at the new General Lee and I liked its chances. Tough trucks, you gotta admit, some of them are ugly, all of them are tough, but a couple of them are just all out bad. One of the baddest tough trucks is Autumn Woods Racing General Lee. These guys have basically borrowed a lot of engineering from a lot of different motorsports and really brought it into the tough truck racing series. So, like, give me an example. What's some of the stuff you got? We got drag racing parts, we got circle track parts in here, monster truck parts. <laughs> all a lot of different designs and aspects of all the different racing worlds all into one package. What did you borrow from Core, man? Pretty much our axle assembly here. We got an independent front end, like a Pro 4 style. We got a Ford 9 inch center section. Usually it's a straight axle. We cut it down, put some bearing supports in there, made it independent. The longer you're on the ground, the more horsepower you can put down the track. And that helps it right there, right? That's what it is. On the track, he's laying it down with a 2002 LS1 out of a vet bored to a 408. So we got the power in the engine, getting to the wheels. How does it get there? How do we get it from there to here, man? 
Right from the engine, we go right into a uh, power glide. We got a done bear case on a power glide, two-speed transmission. Then we go straight from there into a jack shaft, into an SCS transfer case. Same kind of transfer case monster trucks use, right? That's the monster truck technology there. So there you got monster truck technology there. You got power glide that you see all the time at a drag. You can't go to a drag race without seeing a power glide. And this is the kind of stuff when you look down here, you see that type of trailing arm in a lot of pre-runner desert trucks, right? So that's where you got that? Yep, pretty much that's where that come from. I, I mount it down there, you get a little bit lower shock, keep the truck lower, yet adding to your travel from being like leverage points. If you had the shock just right on top of that axle, you're limited to the shock length, but by moving it up onto the arm itself, you actually get more travel out of a shorter We're shock. We're getting uh, 18 inches of travel out of 14 inch shock. All right, we got the new General Lee, pretty much tomorrow's technology today, but still out there racing is the old General Lee under new paint, obviously, and uh, Chris Mosier behind the wheel. Uh, tell me some of the differences between the old one and the new. The older, the older truck, we're still running the old Corvette motor, the LT1, all cast block. It does have the aluminum heads, doesn't have the sleeves, it's not bored over, it's, it's still the stock 350 bore. He also has that Ford 9 inch, which is a little stronger in the front end. I'm running a Dana 44 with a clear cover so I can see the, the gears saying it's not the stronger 9 inch. He's got a little st more stable of a landing out of his, so he gets no hop, no bounce, that way his power's to the ground and it's staying to the ground. Chris knew he was outgunned, but he was confident of another victory. He just better be on his game, because I'm coming for him. Good luck, man. Thank you. <laughs> Come race time, everyone had an opinion on which truck would prevail. Probably the new General Lee. It's just too, too fresh looking, you know? You need the old school General Lee. After his embarrassing performance at Lima, Jeff Dedick was out for revenge. Driving like Luke Duke, he handily won the rematch. I gotta tell you guys, sitting here watching this thing this close, it was just amazing. Those trucks, when you watch them come off that final jump in the end, it, you guys did a great job, man. Great race thank no you. matter what thank the results much, are, man. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you guys. Oh, did they really hug and make up at the end? They did. I think that whole rivalry thing was just for like just for laughs. But the whole Autumn Woods team, they hope that the Tough Truck series eventually branches into something like the old Mickey Thompson Stadium trucks. Right, right. Door to door inside action. If it does, it'll be a blast. I'll go to them. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4 and our ultimate tow monster, the Suburban Gorilla, or at least the frame. The body was sent out to the local rhino lining dealer to get coated, and as soon as we finish all the welding and the grinding on this thing, it'll get sent out too. Now obviously the frame for this project has gone through a lot of drastic changes since it first came into the Extreme Shop a couple of months ago. The whole drivetrain has been pushed back six inches and down a couple for better weight distribution. The front axle has a coil spring conversion. The entire frame has been boxed for strength and now the front bumper has been mounted with the killer Warren winch. The next step is to mount this fiberglass one piece front end that came with the Suburban Gorilla kit. Before the body went out we took measurements to make sure it's going to sit in the right spot. You need to, yeah. Hey, but then. You could build this brush guard out of one long piece of tubing with multiple compound bends, or you can build it in sections, which is what we're doing. And we're betting that with good finished welds, it will look like one long piece when we're done. With the mount in the center, we're going to build the brush guard to wrap all the way around the sides and there will be another piece that goes up over the hood. Now when you're trying to get your bends close to your body panels, it's really difficult because you have to do a lot of precise measuring and a lot of trips to the bender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark this piece for the slugs. That in? Yep. Perfect. Now the point behind a slug is actually pretty simple. If you brought another piece of tubing up to this one to join it and just did a butt weld, you actually have a really weak joint. It can fail. So what we're going to do is install what's called a slug inside the tube. We're going to drill it and plug weld it just to hold the slug in place. That way if this tube ever gets hit, the inner tube actually has to fail along with the outside piece. It makes a joint like this really strong. With holes drilled in the outer tube, the slug is placed inside and plug welded. <laughs> you have that welder? Yep. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure this side's level and straight. <clears throat> Hold on. Bring it in. Okay, right. Oh, right. There's our mark. Okay, hold on. That's that's good. Yeah. Can you tack it, but don't burn my hand. I'll try not to. Can you pull it out just a little bit so I can get some penetration? 
you good still? Yep. Ow, my thumb! But I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Now that we got a nice fit, always remember that slugging something like a bumper or an engine cage is okay. But when you're doing some main supportive part of your roll cage, you might want to reconsider. With the brush guard taking shape, we can flip it over and do all the welding on the inside. Then later, we're actually going to mount the fiberglass front end to the brush guard itself, then the whole thing will flip in one piece. Now it's time to figure out what we're going to do with our off-road lights. The body itself is going to have some roof-mounted long-distance illumination, but we wanted some lower-mounted floodlights. So we went with these Casey Highlights flood driving lamps. These 35 watt high intensity discharge beams will not only flood the entire ground in front of the truck, but this hard coated Lexon cover will protect the bulbs from any damage or any rocks or whatever. So as soon as Ian is done with that bumper, we can go ahead and figure out where we're gonna put them. So we'll see you in just a little bit. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4. With the front end of the Suburban Gorilla all welded up and looking great, it's time to tear into the back end. Which means we can start cutting up the bumper. We could leave it just the way it is, but there's a few more things that we need to mount to it, so it's time to start modifying. Oh, wow, that was a very fast drill bit. <laughs> The Warren 16.5 Ti winch on the front of the truck is going to work great, but what if we need to winch something that's actually behind the truck? In an ideal world, we'd just turn the truck around, but what if we can't? The only logical solution? Another winch on the back. To match the front, we're going to mount the winch behind a tubular structure. Then, we'll recess the body of the winch into the truck's bumper. Hold on one second. Now, remember the last time we were trying to put a fuel tank in this truck, we are actually going to be installing the 25 gallon plastic cell that came with the body kit. And then we thought, you know, 25 gallons, exactly how far do you think we're going to get? So we called LMC Truck and we had an original 87 Suburban 40 gallon steel tank shipped in. And all we got to do now is figure out where to put it and it's only going to cost about 100 bucks to fill it up. So once we figure that out, all we got to do is finish grinding some stuff, make sure all the welds are finished, strip her down, and this thing can go get coated right along with the body. So the next time you see this thing, the body will be back, and hopefully by the end of that show, we can put the two together. Like peanut butter and jam. <laughs> Bye.